I forced these too many windows through the most brutal benchmarks. The results just blew my mind. It came down to a single frame and one decision. Hey, you're watching Harbor of Tech, I'm Neil. Today, we're comparing Tiny11 and Tiny10, the stripped-down versions of Windows 11 and Windows 10. I'll run them through CPU and GPU stress tests, benchmark the RAM and storage usage, and finish with a real-world gaming test to see which one actually performs. Right at the start, Tiny11 pulls slightly ahead, with Tiny10 based on an operating system that's nearing its end. Long-term support is already uncertain. Next up is the RAM usage test. Tiny11 uses about 1.6 GB at idle out of 4 GB, while Tiny10 sits lower at just 1.4. In this round, Tiny10 clearly takes the lead with its better memory efficiency. Let's jump into the boot speed test first, Tiny11. As soon as I restart, the system begins loading almost instantly. The clean minimal design means there's less overhead, allowing the OS to load quickly and efficiently. The speed here is impressive, especially for a stripped down version. Tiny11's quick startup makes it a great choice if you want performance without the bloat, especially for everyday use. At 21 seconds and 70 milliseconds, Tiny11 finishes the boot process. Next up, Tiny10. As some restart, the system boots up with the familiar Windows 10 splash screen. The boot process is smooth, but spoiler alert, it takes just a little longer than Tiny11. At first, it seems to be catching up, but you'll notice a slight pause compared to Tiny11's quicker pace. By the time Tiny10 completes its boot, it finishes at 22 seconds and 70 milliseconds. Therefore, Tiny11 emerges as the winner in this phase of the boot speed test. Next, let's talk storage. The tables turn once again. Tiny11 uses 5.6 GB of space on a clean installation, while Tiny10 takes the lead with just 5.12 GB. In this case, Tiny10 wins with its more efficient use of disk space. I've summed up the results of these three benchmarks into a graph to give you a clear idea of which OS is faster. But if you're looking to take your PC's performance even further, I'd suggest trying Velotic, a tool I've spent years developing to help users get the most out of their systems. Velotic optimizes your PC and boosts FPS in over 150 games, making your gaming experience smoother. It automatically cleans up junk files, improving overall performance without any extra effort from you. On top of that, it lets you compress your drive, saving up to 70% of space without deleting any of your files. It also deploads your system, removing unnecessary blow bar with just one click, and helps you install apps in a single click, saving you time and boosting productivity. One of the best parts is the ability to customize your OS with over 500 tweaks to maximize performance. These are just a few of the Lonix features, all packed into one app. Right now, you can grab a lifetime license for only $9.99. This is a limited time offer. And you can pay with PayPal, credit or debit cards, and even crypto. Now let's get into the CPU performance using Geekbench 6. First, I'm running the benchmark on Tiny11. To save time, I've sped up the footage 20 times, so you can still watch the full process without the long wait. Tiny11 finishes with a single core score of 2741 and a multi-core score of 10755. That's a solid result for a minimal Windows 11 setup, handling CPU tasks with good efficiency. Next, we run the same test on Tiny Team, again shown at 20 speed. This time, the single core score is slightly higher at 2756, the multi core score also edges ahead. Coming in at 10879, I've added both sets of scores into a graph for clear comparison. The difference isn't massive, but Tiny Team does take the lead in both single and multi core performance in this round. Now moving to Cinebench R23 for the multi-core CPU test, this one takes a while to run in real time, so I've sped it up 80 times to keep things moving. First up is Tiny11. When it wraps up, the score comes in at 788, and now it's Tiny 10s turn, same test. Also shown at 80x speed, it performs almost identically, completing the test without any issues. The final score is 784, just 4 points behind Tiny11. The difference here is minimal, and while both perform nearly the same, Tiny11 takes a slight win in this round. Now we move to the single core test in Cinebench R23. Just like before, I've sped up the footage anytime so you can see the full run without waiting around. Starting with Tiny11, it handles the single core workload smoothly and wraps up with a score of 110. 
then we run the exact same test on 2010, also at 80x speed, and surprisingly, it finishes with the exact same score, 110. This time, it's a tie. Both operating systems deliver identical performance on a single core load, so I'll count this round as a draw. Now I'll plot the results on a graph for a clear visual comparison across both multi-core and single-core scores. Now we're moving on to GPU performance using Geekbench 6. I've sped up the test footage four times to keep it watchable while still showing the process clearly. First up, Tiny11. It goes through a series of graphics workloads, compute-heavy tasks, shader stress, and rendering simulations. After a full run, Tiny11 scores 131721 points. Next, we have Tiny Team running the same GPU test, also at 4x speed. It goes through the exact same stress and handles the workload without issues. This time, the final score is 131294, just a 427 point difference. That's an extremely close result, but mathematically, Tiny11 wins. Now let's wrap up the GPU testing with Citybench R23. I have sped up the footage 8 times to keep things concise. Starting with Tiny11, it runs through the task and finishes with a score of 13339. Next is Tiny10, going through the same test under identical conditions. It completes the benchmark with a score of 12432. That gives Tiny11 a noticeable lead in GPU rendering performance. I have plotted both scores on a graph so you can clearly see the gap between them. For the final test we're running GTA 5 Enhanced to see how these operating systems handle a real-world modern game, I have set up a side-by-side -side timeline so you can watch both versions in action. This is not just about benchmarks, it is about actual gameplay. At the end of the clip we will compare the average FPS and see which OS delivers smoother performance in a real gaming scenario. Enjoy the timeline! Now that the gameplay is done, let's look at the average FPS. Tiny 10 managed 161 frames per second, while Tiny 11 pushed slightly ahead with 169. It gives Tiny 11 the edge in gaming performance, even if the difference is small. Tiny 10 wins 4 out of 11 benchmarks, Tiny 11 wins 5 out of 11, and one test ends in a draw. That gives Tiny 11 a narrow win overall, but scores aren't everything. If you're using a very old PC with limited RAM and you don't care about getting updates from Microsoft, then Tiny 10 is still a strong choice. It's lightweight, efficient, and delivers solid performance and CPU-heavy tasks. However, for most users with average PCs who want modern driver support, updates, and slightly better GPU and gaming performance, Tiny 11 is the better option. 
It keeps the clean feel of Tiny Ted while adding just enough to stay compatible with newer software and hardware. If you found this comparison useful, like the video, share it with others, and subscribe for more content like this. Hit the bell icon so you do not miss future tests and breakdowns. Let me know in the comments which edition you are using right now or planning to try.